Okay, at this part, we are going to introduce uh, data forwarding models. And for the data forwarding, here you can see we have two optional models. First is called local forwarding, and then another is called centralized forwarding. Okay, and since we are talking about the data forwarding, actually in a wireless network, there are two types of data. Let's see this figure. In this figure, you can see two different colors, right? The yellow one represents the data transmission, while the green one represents the control transmission. Control transmission is used, for example, the configuration files or some control message from the AC to the AP or from between AP and ACs. While data transmission here represents the service data generated by different applications, okay? And uh, for these two forwarding models, let's see the first one, the centralized forwarding first. The reason why we call it centralized forwarding because in this model, AC, this is AC, AC works as a central device. You can see no matter it's a data transmission or the control transmission is aggregated by AC, right? Is aggregated by AC. For example, the traffic from the STAs, we'll assume that this here, this is an STA, and the traffic from STAs to the internet is forwarded to AC first, and then AC will send it to the internet. And of course, the incoming uh, packets, for example, from the internet to STAs, is forwarded to AC first, and then AC will send it to STA. Okay, this is uh, the reason why we call it centralized forwarding. And then, next is a local forwarding. Let's see this figure. The arrows we can find here is different from what we have just seen, right? For the control transmission is forwarded to the AC. Because the control transmission is exchanged between AP and AC, so we must send it to AP and uh, AP will send it to AC. While for the traffic or for the data transmission, for the service data, they will not be aggregated by AC at all. Let's see the yellow arrow here. The data traffic between the internet and the STAs here is directly forwarded by the WID network. So they are, are directly forwarded and uh, no need to go through AC. Okay, this is a difference between local forwarding and the centralized forwarding. So no matter what which type we use, what we are transferring is a packet, right? Or we can see it's a frame. So let's see the whole procedure. Firstly, let's see the centralized forwarding when we send the packets. Send the packets means that STA want to send a packet maybe to the uh, internet. So let's see the whole process. Now STA has already generated a uh, data. This is called the STA data. Since it's using a wireless network, so the standard or the format is 802.11, means this is a wireless uh, data unit. And of course, this packet will be sent to AP first. And after receiving that, you can find entire network only use wireless to transmit data between AP and STAs. And after receiving that, STA will convert it. Let's see. The packet has been converted into a Ethernet packet. In the Ethernet packet, you can find the destination IP address, source IP address, UDP header, VLAN tag, and the payload. In this each field, for example, the destination IP address actually is the IP address of AC. From the destination IP, we know that AP will send this packet to AC first. So from here, we can find this is a centralized forwarding model, right? So after converting it into a Ethernet packet, then, let's see, through the cable terminal between AP and AC, this packet is forwarded to AC. Okay, after receiving it, AC, first they will decapsulate this packet. Let's see what we got. After receiving it, 
AC has already decapsulated the packet and you can see the VLAN tag and the payload is left. But the des actually the destination is not AC. The data is sent from STA to the internet. So AC will send it. Actually, after decapsulation the packet, AC will send it to the switch and the switch will send it to the bars. And the format is 802.3 is a Ethernet data through the trunk port between AC and the switch. Okay, this is the procedure when we send packet in the centralized forwarding model. And after sending it to the internet, of course, there could be some feedback. So let's see the process of receiving. Now, this is a Ethernet data, right? Of course, the standard is 802.3 is the Ethernet data. And uh, now the purpose is, is to send this data to the STA. So let's see what's the next step. Firstly, it will be sent to the switch and the switch will tag it, right? Tag it means add a VLAN tag and send it to AC through the trunk link. After receiving it, AC will encapsulate this packet with the destination IP, which is the IP address of AP. South IP, of course, is AC. Add an UDP header. UDP header actually is used to guide the packet to be transmitted through the cab terminal and uh, include the VLAN tag and the, the payload. Okay, after encapsulation, this packet will be sent to the AP. So you can see it will be sent to AP and uh, AP will send to the STA. But different from the Ethernet packet, here is um, 802.11 packet. Of course, AP send it to STA through the wireless network. Okay, so it has changed the format of the package. Okay, this is a procedure when we send and receive packets in the centralized forwarding model. And then let's see that in local forwarding model. When we introduce the local forwarding model, I think you will find that it's more simpler than the centralized one because the traffic do not need to go through AC anymore. Okay, let's see it. AP has received a um, wireless data, right? Wireless SDA data. And uh, as what we have said, it will convert, convert it into an Ethernet data. And after converting, this packet will be sent directly to the switch. You can see, to the switch. And uh, after adding a tag, this packet will be forwarded in the weird network. So next next stop maybe is a uh, aggregate switch. And the aggregate switch will send it to the bars, right? And uh, the bars will send, of course, take some routes and send it to the network. Okay, this is uh, when we send packets. And here you can see actually the data does not pass the AC at all, right? It's going in this way, from the STA to the AP, to the access switch, to the gate aggregate switch, and then to the bars. Okay, and then let's say receive. Now here is a packet, and uh, in the local forwarding mode, this packet will be sent to the aggregate switch. Aggregate switch will send it to the access switch. Access switch will send to AP, and AP will convert it into a 802.11 format and send it to the PC. Okay, and this is the process when we receive packets in the local forwarding mode. Okay, after knowing this, then let's see the configuration. If we want to use the local forwarding mode, let, how to configure it? Here it shows some key points. First key point is that configure the port on the access switch used to connect the AP as a trunk port and set the native VLAN to the AP VLAN. So you can see here, this is trunk, trunk, and trunk. Except that change the SSID mode to local forwarding because by default actually it's a centralized forwarding mode. And uh, next, reconfigure the mapping between the AP group and the WLAN ID and the VLAN ID. 
and only only actually only in this way it will take effect. So let's see the commands. Firstly, we have entered the interface Gigabit Ethernet 02. We have changed the mode to be trunk, and the native VLAN is 20. Next command is important. Switch port trunk allow VLAN remove from 1 to 9, from 11 to 19, and to, from 21 to 494. Actually, for the VLAN IDs, it has a range. It ranges from 1 to 4094. And we have 4094 VLAN IDs at all. And after removed the numbers we can see here, actually, you can calculate by yourself. Only VLAN 10 and uh, VLAN 20 is left. So it means that on this link or on this interface, only VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 is allowed to go through. Okay. And next, change the SSID mode to the local forwarding. WLAN config one region and the turn on local means it's a local forwarding mode. Then, reconfig the mapping between the AP group and the WLAN ID and the VLAN ID. So, reconfig means we should disable it first and reconfig this command. In this way, it will take effect. Okay, this is about the configuration procedure. Of knowing the working process of these two models, of knowing the configuration, then let's see. Here, make a summary the difference between these two types. Firstly, considering about the delay, local forwarding, since there are fewer hops to the ISP, so actually the delay is shorter than the centralized one, because at least it should go through AC, right? And then for the forwarding performance, the local forwarding performance is determined by the user network and actually it must be um, higher than the centralized one because if we use the centralized mode all the traffic should go through AC and AC is possibly to be a bottleneck of the network and next is for the device processing in most cases AC does not forward data so this reduces workload and bottlenecks of the AC while if it's a centralized forwarding. Data forwarding of the AC is a challenge. So we have a higher performance required for AC and APs in the centralized forwarding. So we can say that local forwarding have a higher forwarding performance than the centralized forwarding mode. And uh, considering about the efficiency of these two modes, we can say that in the centralized forwarding mode, at least 50 bytes overhold is added for each user packet. So it will occupy some bits to carry this kind of overhead and it have reduced the efficiency of data forwarding. Of course, for these two models, you can select a suitable one for your network based on the, what we have mentioned here. Okay, after knowing these two different models, then let's see a question. Which of the following model has a shorter delay? Okay, considering about the delay, since the centralized model requires all the traffic go through AC, while the local model do not have this requirement. So uh, it's possible that local model uh, traffic should go through less units in the network. So it have a shorter delay. In this question, we choose B. Okay, that's all for this part.